Hi, I'm Fidel Master Tomás Capitan Chuk from Argentina, and today we will be analyzing one of the best games of Miguel Nidor. Who was Miguel Nidor? Well, he was a Polish grandmaster, but who represented to Argentina in many Olympiads. Uh, actually, he played in most of the Olympiads, he played in the first board. Uh, and for example, in the second board, uh, a, a game that we will analyze in another video was a uh, Argentinian Oscar Pano. So well, Nidorf was uh, when, when he played, he was one of the best uh, players in the world. He has won many, many uh, strong tournaments. So today, uh, I will analyze a game against the famous Bobby Fischer. So, okay, let's start with the game. Nidorf was white and Fischer was black. It was a, a Queen's Pawn game, especially, uh, specifically um, King's Indian, but then transposed to a kind of Benoni structure. So it was um, e4, d6, bishop e2, castles, and bishop g5. Okay, like here there are many possibilities, but I don't want to focus a lot in the opening because then the the, the following part is more interesting. So it was c5. D5 played uh, Miguel Nidorf. Well, here d takes c5 is not uh, a very good option, at it seems, because here c takes d5 is not uh, that good. But here, here black has um, queen a5, and if we take on d6, black takes on e4, and there is a lot of pressure over this diagonal, these two diagonals, and black has a lot of compensation. So, white, that's why white played d5, e6, knight f3, and we transpose to, a well, as, as I told you before, as a kind of Benoni structure, h6, bishop h4, it takes. And here it's like, okay, we, we have many captures. In general, knight takes d5, it seems like this pin is very uncomfortable, but a move like rook e8, like we now we have our center, not that dangerous is the center. Let's put it in red. And but well, well it, it's right that this this pin is sometimes uncomfortable. But in this position, black is okay because of, of the pressure he has over the e file. And okay, taking with the e pawn is another possibility, but. The problem is that it could be a little bit, uh, I don't know if drawish, but not the, the best way to fight for an advantage. Because now the, well, you know that the main characteristic of the Benoni is to here take with the C-pawn as happened in the game and try to create problems with this one, with the E-pawn. So what happens if we take with the E-pawn on D5 is that now, the, like the that idea with e5 doesn't exist, and the pawn structure is more or less symmetrical, so it will be more difficult to play for a win. Despite this position, could be sometimes more comfortable for white. So, well, Miguel white wanted to to play for a win and played c takes e5. Here, Fisher played g5. That this is a risky move, a double edge move. I'm, I, I, I think it's interesting, but um, we have to be careful because then after Bishop G3, he followed up in not a very good way. He played B5. That seems very interesting, but neither played very accurately here. Probably the, the best option. The, the problem now is that this bishop. Can, sorry, this bishop can become very uncomfortable for for black, especially because it's making pressure over that pawn. 
that well, it's one of the main weaknesses in the in this Benoni structure. Uh, so that's why knight h5 was the um, probably the best move. Knight d2, knight takes g3, continue the variation, h takes. Um, knight d7, knight c4, and queen e7. And this, this was actually a game between Larsen and Fischer in 1966. Um, that well, I think, okay, black has created some weaknesses here, but uh the, the compensation white black has for that is this a strong bishop so now this bishop doesn't have any opponent because we black has taken our bishop on g3 but well white has this also this h file open so in general terms this position could be considered equal despite there is a lot of uh, play here a lot of interesting play but Fischer played b5, that is not a good move. Um, it seems like now black, uh, wh sorry, white can take on, on b5 with the bishop. Um, but here the problem is that knight takes e4. And if knight takes e4, then queen a5. And black has a lot of activity. Uh, well, now we are taking back uh, at least a, a, a piece because if knight c3 here, Bishop takes e3. And then the problem is that if b takes e3, queen takes b5, now it's difficult to castle, to castle short. And we have to also consider that the, the a file is open. And if we take with the knight, it doesn't make a lot of sense because then the e4 pawn is hanging. And you know that in general, a central pawn is more important than a pawn in, on, the, on the a, b, or g and h file. Um, so that's why b5 seems like a very active move because it's one of the black's ideas in the Benoni and in general it's good but here knight of finds a very good way to, to continue that is knight d2 that this move not only defends the pawn on e4 but also um, avoids knight h5 that is the main purpose of this move. And now avoiding knight h5 um, like makes our bishop stronger. Why stronger? Because knight h5 cannot be played. And as I told you before, we will have a lot of pressure over here. Um, okay, so Fischer played a6. Yeah, if b4... I think uh, before is losing uh, material because of knight d5. We are threatening the d6 pawn, and if knight d6, knight d4. And now you can see that light squares are very, very weak. And probably I will be taking the d6 pawn because I have one, two, and three pieces, and only two defending. That's why Fischer played a6, castles. Okay, rook e8 makes sense. This is normal stuff in the Benoni, queen c2. But uh, like you could think the the ones the, the Benoni players that I watch, that are watching this video could could think, okay. But is it isn't it a normal Benoni like Black has achieved b5, and it's is placing his pieces more or less in a correct way. Yeah, could be. But the problem is here these uh, light squares that the move um, g5 provoked. Yes, now you will see in the following moves that Nidorf took advantage uh, of these weak squares. Not only because of these squares, but also now the king is really unsafe. So if in this position the pawn would, uh, was on g6, then it could it's like a normal Menoni probably. Oh, sorry. Um, so, okay, black played um, queen e7, rook a e1. This makes a lot of sense. Knight bd7, and now knight of played a very interesting move that is a4. Taking advantage uh, of this uh, black's expansion. 
because now this well this forces black almost to yes to go before because um i don't know taking on on a4 or if you don't take on a4 or play before then this point will be hanging so it is probably a little bit safe, uh, more safe this before than taking the pawn so and now knight of played a very interesting maneuver that is knight d1 the idea is that we will take advantage of these squares with this maneuver that is very typical in the um, in the in this benoni structure when obviously only this is this only applies when the pawn is on g5 if the pawn is on g3 on g6 sorry okay it, it doesn't make a lot of sense in comparison with when the pawn is on g5 um and also neither takes advantage of this that knight takes e4 is not possible now be because of tactical reasons here white has just um, uh, bishop d3 and okay this is a very uncomfortable pin and probably we will be winning uh, material in the next moves so 91 95 played uh, fisher 93 96 okay um sometimes black has some play over these two squares so that's why fisher plays this one over here with the knight knight e c4 knight f4 and bishop takes so okay let's try to analyze this position we we can find that white pawn structure is more safe than black's one um but it seems like a common benoni structure and position because you know that black always have has some some ideas like and, and some activity so like for example black is threatening well i don't know if it's threatening but it's planning to go 97 95 and uh, keep strong over the dark squares for example and well in the future it could he could have some ideas with king h8 and rook g8 like very aggressive ideas so taking that into account i would like you to pause the video some minutes and um try to find how miguel neidorf how white player continued here you can pause the video now Okay, here uh, Miguel Neidorf played in a very active way, as we have to to do always, and it was e5, sacrificing a pawn for a lot of activity. What's the idea of this e5? Okay, now, like one aspect is that we have created a bass pawn. This is one. The other one is that now we will have a lot of pressure over this um file and probably in the future this e5 pawn will be weak and we have also now activity over the the light squares yes like now we can see that well neither played bishop f3 yeah and now like all this combination of of moves of pieces like the knight very strong on c4 the bishop now making out of pressure over this diagonal the past pawn this rook yeah and so it's very strong because white has a lot of compensation here for the pawn well now black played queen f8 and white took it and from now on the game is more or less was more or less easy for neither because the position is uh, like white has a lot of advantage let's see how it continued bishop b7 knight dc4 Okay, here there was a like a, um, a subtlety that okay, white, sorry, black couldn't take on d5. Uh, I I think many of you have seen the, now the tactics. Well, it was that uh, bishop takes knight takes and knight d7, and the queen is trapped. 
So let's go back. Um, that's why black played rook a d8. White went knight c6, and now what? Well, that also that square is very important for white. The the, the c6 square. Um, rook takes e1. Rook takes e1. Rook e8. Follow the game. But okay, well, knight of played the rook d1. Rook c8. H3. Well, he he plays uh, very very quietly. Um, okay, here knight takes d5 is not possible because um, now knight a5 is very strong and we are threatening two pieces at the same time. So knight e8 played black, but now, yeah, as I told you, the, the position is easy for at this level. <laughs> this is a, a winning position almost. Um, because, like, we, we can see that. All white pieces are very active, and uh, and all of them has have an important uh, purpose in the position, and it's like black pieces are loose. White played queen f5, knight d6, and after knight takes d6, black resigned. What happened if black? Took on d6. Okay, the problem now is that knight takes b7, and if rook takes queen c8, winning the the rook. And yeah, okay. Here uh, after knight takes d6, black resigned. Okay, I think this game, it's like it was more or less easy for neither. In the sense that, okay, this probably was not a, a good day for Bobby, for Bobby Fisher. Uh, but we can see that uh, in the first, there was only one mistake that uh, Bobby made. And then that it was here, it was, you can see that um, a very little detail at this level makes a lot of difference. Like, uh, remember I told you here the move was night, um, sorry. Instead of b5, knight h5. Um, so well, but obviously we have to, uh, let's say, to congratulate Snyder because he took advantage of this um, inaccuracy uh, Fisher made and then played, uh, Miguel played a, a perfect game. So well, hope you have enjoyed it and see you next time. Thank you.